Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the concrete implementation of the Kruskal algorithm. It's not going to be the prettiest algorithm, I mean as far as the implementation is concerned, I'm going to implement it with the help of disjoint sets and I'm going to implement it in an object-oriented way. We could use two-dimensional arrays and C++ and C-like code structure, but I would like to avoid that because this is Java and this is object-oriented environment. So, okay. First of all, I'm going to create a new package, for example, with the name Kruskal. I'm going to create several classes. First, I'm going to create the vertex class. It's going to represent the vertex in the given physical graph. We are going to have an edge. It's going to be the edges in the graph. And we are going to have another class. Basically, it is needed for the disjoint set implementation. If you recall for the theoretical section, we have been discussing that we are going to assign an empty set to all the vertices in the graph at the beginning. And basically, these are going to be the disjoint sets. And basically, we have to merge these disjoint sets in order to decide in constant time complexity whether adding a new edge will form a cycle or not. And if you may recall, the disjoint set can be implemented with the help of link lists and with the help of tree-like structure. And basically, this node is the tree-like structure nodes. We are going to implement disjoint sets with the help of a tree-like structure. And of course, as usual, a tree-like structure contains nodes. So this node is basically is because of the disjoint set implementation. It's going to be clear, but okay, just for now, take it for granted. Okay, I'm going to create, for example, the disjoint set. And we will have the Kruskal algorithm itself. And an application .java from where we are going to test our application. So the app.java. The vertex is basically contains a string of name. It's going to be the name of the vertex. And basically, we are going to assign a disjoint set node to every vertex because that's what we have been discussing, that at the beginning, every vertex basically a distinct disjoint set. Maybe you pose the question that, okay, why don't we define all the variables of the node class into the vertex class? It's working fine, but I think that it's quite misleading to merge the features of the disjoint set nodes with the vertex nodes, because basically both of them can be considered as a tree-like structure, both the graph and both the disjoint set. So that's why I think it is quite confusing to mix the node parameters with the vertex parameters. So that's why I have a node as a composition in the vertex. I think there's no problem with it. Okay. I'm going to have the vertex constructor. In the constructor, we are going to have a string name. It's going to be the name of the vertex. This dot name is equal to the name. And basically I'm going to override the two string method. I'm just going to return the this.name as usual. And I'm going to generate some getters and setters for the node. Okay, Control Shift F to auto format. Then what about the edge? The edge is going to be your old friend as we have discussed for shortest path algorithms and so on. So we will have a private double weight. We will have a private vertex start vertex and the private vertex target vertex. Basically, every edge has two vertices, a start vertex and a target vertex. I'm going to generate a constructor. So source generate constructor using fields with the weight, the start vertex and the target vertex. I'm going to get rid of the super method call I'm going to generate the getters and setters for all of them. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it, but anyways. 
And because the Kruskal algorithm is an edge-based algorithm, as you may recall, we have to sort the edges according to the edge weights. So we are going to use the collections.sort and that's why we have to implement the comparable interface as far as the edge class is concerned. Of course, we would like to compare edges, so a given edge with another edge. And of course, why is it important to override this compare to method? Because then collections is going to ask that, okay, I know that I have to sort these custom objects, but according to what? do I have to sort according to the start vertices, according to the target vertices, according to the weight? Of course, we would like to sort it according to the weight. Basically, it is very, very similar to what we have been discussing when we were implementing the dash class shortest path algorithm. There, we had to implement a comparable interface for the vertex because we have to define some numerical ordering as far as the minimum distance is concerned. Here we are going to define the relationship between the edges and of course we would like to return the double, why double? Because the weights are doubles, so doubles.compare, we have to compare the first edge weight with the, I'm not sure what is the, okay it is just the edge, the other edge that weight. Sorry not weight, I'm going to use the get weight, okay. So basically, Control shift f to auto format, and that's all about the edge implementation. What's very important that, okay, this is basically the same as we have discussed in the previous videos, but we have to implement a comparable interface. Why? Because the first step in the Kruskal algorithm is that we have to sort the edges of the graph according to the edge weights. And that's why we implement a comparable interface we tell Java that we would like to compare edges with edges and according to what? Of course, according to the edge weight, we would like to sort or custom objects. So that's all about the edge and the vertex method. In the next video, we are going to implement the disjoint set. So this node is going to be the building block of the disjoint sets because we are going to implement or disjoint set with the help of a tree-like structure instead of a linked list implementation. And basically, why is it good? You will see that, okay, we have to bother about disjoint set implementation, what's the difference between the node and the vertex class, but you will see that the Kruskal algorithm itself is going to be very, very compact, approximately 10 lines of codes, very, very readable, and we can see that what's happening in the background, we don't have to know about the disjoint set, by the way, but I would like to implement it together. Okay, thanks for watching.